So recently I took my first ever trip to New York. I had a layover that allowed me about 12 hours to explore New York before I had to catch another flight, in this case back to Europe where I live. Now I was thinking about what camera should I take me on my first ever trip to New York, a place I wanted to visit for quite a while. And in the end I ended up taking a 10 year old mirrorless camera with me. And the question is, how did that turn out? Was I able to take good photos? Was that a mistake? Should I have taken something newer, something different, something better? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer all those questions while also doing a bit of a travel log for my trip to New York. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So before we dive into the photos that I took, just a few things to set the context. I was flying back towards Europe and I had a stopover uh, in New York. I arrived at JFK, went straight to a hotel. In the morning I woke up at six and uh, went into New York, into Manhattan, and I had to be at the Newark airport at 6 p.m. in the evening. So I had 12 hours in total, including travel in and travel out, and I did a kind of a whirlwind tour of what I could very quickly, just walking around midtown Manhattan, you know, Empire State Building, all that kind of stuff. Now with me, I had a camera. I won't tell you what camera it is now. I'll reveal that at the end. But what I can tell you, it was a mirrorless camera. It's at least 10 years old and uh, it can do RAW and JPEG. And the pictures that you're gonna see are all RAW pictures that I've then processed into their final state to present to you here. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look at some of the pictures that I took. This is really the first thing I saw in New York having come from the airport. This is the Jamaica train station that takes you into Manhattan. Very different to the European types of uh, train station that I am used to seeing. That This yellow here uh, is very, very uh, bright and I like this view down the track here. And talking of the yellow, you've got this watch the gap. Now in London, you do get these warnings about the gaps between the platform and the train. But in, in London, it says mind the gap. Mind the gap here, it was watch the gap. So I, I took that photo just to show that. Having arrived in Manhattan, I started to look at the sights and sounds, of course, Madison Square Garden, a very famous place. And so I took a quick snap of that. And of course, no trip to Midtown Manhattan would be complete without a view of the Empire State Building, an iconic building there. You can see it from many, many different vantage points while you're in uh, Manhattan. In fact, here I am at the base of it looking up. You can't quite see that pointy uh, pit at the top there, the, the antenna mast and so on. But there you go, there is the Empire State Building. The next place on my trip was Grand Central Station. Of course, this iconic uh, hallway here, this lobby here, seen uh, in so many films, uh, very iconic. Uh, now, one thing that's interesting to note when you are taking pictures as a tourist is that, of course, there are lots of other tourists. If you just look at the bottom of the frame there, you can see the heads of other people who were taking selfies and so on up at the set of stairs that I went up here. And of course, it's a very busy station. So uh, I don't know when would be the best time to, if you wanted to catch it without anybody in it, but that is something to uh, watch out for. However, generally pretty pleased with that shot there of Grand Central. Now, another interesting thing that I saw that you don't kind of get even, you know, in big cities like London is these very tiny little, what are they, hot dog stands? I don't know what you, the official term of them, but I thought they're quite amazing. They literally are on, on every corner all over the place. They're brightly colored, lots of pictures of the food everywhere on them. Uh, and I thought they were quite, I did actually buy something from one of them at one point because I was a bit hungry. So this is a, a quite a very New York thing that I saw and uh, and I think the camera, because that's what we're talking about in this video, has performed pretty well up until this point, capturing all of these things. Another famous thing in New York, because of course it is such a uh, populated area, is the roof gardens. And this is a, a small area with some trees and shrubs growing on a roof in a library uh, in New York. And so when I went up there, I wanted to capture that because in the background you can see the buildings and that's several floors up. You're not, there's not one at street level here, we're several floors up. 
and there's another picture just around the corner here and i'm assuming at lunchtime people will come here particularly in good weather they sit on these chairs they sit at these tables they enjoy their lunches and we're several stories up here uh, up in the air and of course the new york taxi uh, again uh, i spent much of my life uh, in london so we have black taxi cabs here we have the yellow ones they're much more modern than of course i've seen in so many of you know the classic films with taxis these are much more modern cars but they really are everywhere the yellow taxis of new york Another interesting thing about New York is the mix of architecture. Here is a, a well-known cathedral and you can see its architecture, even its brickwork, everything about it is very different to the skyscrapers that you see next to it and behind it. And you see that a lot in New York, this kind of mix of the old and the new next to each other, side by side. And no trip to New York would be complete without a visit to Central Park. I love this view here. You've got the foreground, you've got the reeds on this side of the lake, you've got the lake, you've got the trees, many layers. That's what I like about this picture. The lake on the trees on the other side of the lake, and then behind that, the skyline, the New York skyline with the different buildings there. Thought that was a nice shot. And that's that kind of view you see a lot through Central Park. And while I was in Central Park, I came to this very famous place. Again, many movies and things have happened here. Now, I was able to take several shots. This is a slightly uh, manufactured shot in that I did some overlaying to delete some people and things like that. Very hard again, like that shot uh, at uh, the train station. Very hard to get ones without people in it. But I managed to do that without, uh, you know, breaking the authenticity of the shot. So uh, I like that picture. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that one. Now, one thing that was interesting, I didn't think about it until I got there and realized that Central Park actually has quite a lot of wildlife. And this is one area where my camera did fail me slightly because it has a limited zoom on it. And I'll tell you more about the exact details of the zoom. But really, I wanted to get in some close up shots to these uh, birds and the chicks, but I couldn't do that with the zoom that I had. So if I was going to Central Park specifically just to take photos of the wildlife, I would definitely want to take a different camera with me or a different zoom lens at least with me. And the inverse is also true, wide uh, angle. Here is a picture of a school bus. Again, very American in my eyes. We don't have school buses like this uh, in Europe. And this is so long that I, even though I was pushed up right against the back wall, I couldn't get the whole bus uh, in there in this shot on the widest uh, setting of the lens that I had on the camera. Okay, and now for the big reveal. The camera that I took with me was a Sony Alpha 5100, 5100. Now, it was released in 2014. It's got a 24 megapixel sensor on it, and it is a, a mirrorless camera. So does gear matter? Did I have to take the latest uh, Nikon, Nikon, latest Canon, the latest Sony camera with me to get good photos or not? Will you be the judge of that personally? I think I didn't need to. 24 megapixel mirrorless camera is perfect for a travel setup. Uh, acknowledging the things that I did show there about the lens and everything in the uh, in the video. Really, gear doesn't matter. What matters is taking the picture composition, knowing the camera, learning the camera, understanding the different modes, aperture priority, uh, and so on, and the and being comfortable with the camera and capturing what you needed to capture. Should I have spent two, three thousand dollars on a newer camera to take with me? I think no. Love to hear what you think though. Love to hear your opinion. I think the internet's kind of divided on this. Some people think the gear is what turns you into a great photographer. Other people just say it's not. Would it have been better to take that camera but with a better lens? Now that could be uh, a good argument that maybe the lens is worth spending money on. In this particular case, I took that uh, pancake kit lens with me. So that's an interesting point. Love to hear your thoughts on that as well in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of video, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.